This is Mungo Dark Manor, and welcome to Dark Manners. Today on Dark Manners, I'm going to do initial user interface review on Windows 8. Now, uh, Windows 8 has a new interface called Metro, and it's designed for touch screens and smartphones. And, you know, that's the telephone right now. Ain't that a coincidence? Well, let me answer this and get right back to you. That was Windows 8. It wanted its start menu back. Uh, one of the things Microsoft actually did to uh, Windows 8 was they removed the start menu and replaced it with something they call the start screen, or you call, call it a start page. It's basically the entire screen. Uh, it replaces the start menu. And uh, so, um, in some ways, that's a better thing because, you know, the, the start screen or the start page stays up while you're selecting whatever program uh, you want to go into, whereas before you'd click down on the start menu and sometimes it'd get kind of lengthy and you have problems clicking on things farther down on the start menu. Uh, with the start uh, screen, you can scroll across the screen. And if you have a touch screen, you can just take your finger, scroll across it, and press uh, whatever program you want to start up. Some people don't really like this feature when they're using a mouse. Uh, because they find it a little bit confusing and it takes a little bit of getting used to if you remember that the start screen is really just the start menu from before it will be a lot easier to get used to because you'll realize you keep on looking for the start menu but it's really the start page so what I decided to do was I decided to see what it was really like in practice. And instead of really working a lot with Windows 8 and getting really slick and coming back here and going, oh, well, this is why you do this like this, and of course you go over here and do this, I thought I'd, uh, I'd uh, give a challenge to uh, Windows 8 and myself, and I thought I'd go in. Uh, I have looked at it a little bit and messed with it slightly, but I haven't really loaded any programs yet or used any programs on it just kind of looked at the interface so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a couple of programs from the internet that are free and uh, see how the interface starts them up the various ways you can start it up with the interface and how to navigate through the interface and uh, you'll see there'll be some things that I don't really even know yet as I do this little demo because I'm going through it uh, there, there are some differences and uh, uh, I need to frankly learn them, and once I do, I will tell you what they are. <laughs> and uh, But this is really pretty much a raw kind of, like, let's go through it and see how hard it is. Now, the other thing is, I might go through it actually a little more smoothly, because I'm really used to various operating systems and stuff, and I did look at it a little bit. So, if you get Windows 8, or you try Windows 8, and it's a little more confusing to you, uh, don't worry, uh, that, that's, that's going to be normal. But just remember, start screen is what the start menu used to be. And you get to the start screen by hitting the Windows uh, button on your computer. You get to your desktop by hitting Windows B, the letter B is in Bob. And uh, you can also click down on the corner of your screen to go back between the two and we'll see that in the video too so um enjoy the video and uh i hope it's of help to you this is mungo dark matter and welcome to dark matters today on dark matters i'm going to be doing a little review of windows 8 and its new interface and so to uh, really to kind of take it for a test drive i thought i'd put myself in Windows 8 on the line and uh, install or attempt to install a program onto Windows 8 and see exactly what happens so I'm gonna go to Internet Explorer first by clicking on this little square here Windows 8 starts on like a start page which is equivalent to the start menu on uh, Windows 7 and before and uh, so uh, 
this is what the new Internet Explorer looks like. It looks like the um, the uh, address w window is at the bottom of the screen, which is a little bit weird, but okay, I can handle that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Google just to be uh, just to be a little bit decadent, I guess. All right, um, I'm gonna install a real simple free. Um, program called uh, no not audible audacity it's good to download this should be fast to download and to install that's why I've picked it all right uh, we're gonna go get audacity for windows yeah heck use the installer let's see what happens here All right, I'm gonna have a choice of running it or saving it. I always like to save first and then run it because I like to have a copy of the program on the hard drive just in case I need it later. Okay, download completed. That was pretty fast. It says run. Let's go ahead and run it. It takes us to the desktop automatically, and then it's gonna go. Do you want to allow the following program from an unknown publisher to make changes to your computer? I'm going to go yes. This is a virtual machine version of um, Windows 8, and it's the uh, release preview. So it's uh, it's it's running on another machine, like within the Windows 7 operating system. So um, because it's a virtual machine, if anything happens to it, it's not my actual production machine. All right, I'm going to just run through this and install it real quick. Yeah, create this top icon, install. All right, so put an icon on the desktop like it would normally. And we'll just go finish. And start it up for the first time. The install program did that. Let, let's close this out and go and start it up from the desktop. Okay, that looks pretty much like a normal version of Windows. And so there's the program. And I'm going to shut that program down there. And I'm going to go back. Now, I go down here and there's Internet Explorer and there is no start menu really. But if I put my cursor in the very corner it has the start page there and I'm gonna click on that and uh, bring it up and uh, well we have uh, audacity right here on the menu so we're gonna start that up and see what it's like and we're gonna go okay and uh, it started the program up okay alright now so let's close this out we're back on the desktop to get back to the start menu all we have to do is hit the windows button oh, ignore this over here that's part of the the um, windows 7 but it brought it back in, in the operating system and so let's um, go back and click on desktop all right, I'm going to hit the Windows button, and it brings us back to the Start menu right here, and I'm going to click back on Desktop. All right, so let's try something a little more fancified. I'm going to click on Windows Explorer again here. And this time it brings up a different-looking Windows Explorer. Um, isn't that interesting? Let's go back to, if I go back to Windows and I hit Internet Explorer, it has the uh, address at the bottom down here. And the, well, it still has the web page we opened open. So I'm going to hit a, I'm going to hit the Windows button again and it brings me back to the start. And I'm going to hit desktop again, and we'll go back to this version of Windows. That's a little bit interesting here. What happens if we go down here and right-click on the task manager? Let's 
Since we got Windows Explorer running here. Interesting. This is the new task manager. Um, so, interesting. We have three apps running task manager and two Internet Explorers. This other Internet Explorer has a different icon on it. If I click on that, and well, let's double click on it, it brings up the other Internet Explorer which is running under um, Windows Metro and um, which is the uh, kind of start page interface thing here I'm gonna hit the Windows button again go back alright let's uh, go back to the desktop let's close out task manager a little something to get used to there. I'm going to go back to uh, Google again. And I'm going to type in this time Open Office, which is a free um, office suite that has a word processor and a spreadsheet and a couple other things in it. I'm going to go ahead and download that. This might take another minute uh, or a few minutes because uh, it's a lot bigger program than uh, Audacity is. All right. Now, once again, it asked me to save or run. This Internet Explorer interface looks a little bit more normal than normal, like what you're used to. The other one, when we went right from the Metro interface into Internet Explorer looked a little more like a kiosk version. All right, so I'm going to go save here. All right. Took a minute there, and now I'm going to just click on Run. I'm going to tell it, yeah, go ahead and run the program. Alright, now I'm going to hit next here. Unpack it. Open Office is, a, as I said before, a free version of an Office suite that has word processor, spreadsheet, uh, presentation software in it. Uh, it's pretty good if you want just a word processor and a spreadsheet for personal use. Um, I think actually the um, presentation software looks like it may run pretty good too. I haven't really used that part of it that much. I believe it now has a database in it, which I have not used. Um, but it actually works uh, with Microsoft Office files if you want to edit something. So you can move it back and forth between the two uh, fairly easily. All right, it's preparing to install. We still have the taskbar down here because we're on the traditional desktop. But once again, there's no the start menu is replaced by this start page down here. So that's a little bit unusual. That will take a little bit of getting used to. Um, initially, I was a little bit skeptical about it, but I guess it's just really getting used to the start menu looking a little different, and in a sense. It's a little nicer because when you bring up the actual start menu or, or the start page, it's up here. Whereas before you'd click on the start menu and it would sometimes it got really big. And on this, you can actually scroll across the page when more as more um, little squares or icons appear on the screen. Go back here. It's finishing up install right now. Yeah, it might take another minute. 
So, um, it's just a little bit, maybe it's just a little bit different to get used to. Um, you still have the desktop, as I said. Now, some of these applications on here, on the start, actually kind of live in their own space, it looks like. All right, I'm going to, um, yeah, go typical, install. So I haven't run into any problems installing this program yet. Uh, we'll see how it runs really quick. All right, we're going to hit finish right here. Now, now I may have a problem. First of all, let's go back down to the start menu and hit on here and see what's happened. Okay. Now, it's loaded a bunch of programs here, and these are all part of the suite here. So, uh, we have Office Writer, which is like Word. We have uh, Impress. Open Office Impress, which is a presentation software like PowerPoint. We have a draw program here. We have a database program. Calc is the spreadsheet. All right, now, so we should be able to start any of those from here. And re remember, this is like a start page now in Metro, but it really represents the start menu that used to be on um, Windows 7 and before except it takes up the whole screen so alright we're gonna go and uh, we can go click back down in the corner here this time and click on the desktop to bring us back and uh, I don't have any icons on here for open office now what are we gonna do about that now, first off, what happens when we click on the Open Office icon? It's probably going to bring us up a choice of um, programs to run or something. I usually have been going into Open Office right straight through the Start menu. Yeah, the Open Office thing, it, it asks us what type of um, document we want to create. So if I click on a text document... It's going to open up Writer and create a new document. Let me shut that window behind us. All right, now, what happens if I go down to the corner here? Now, if I reduce this, all right, it's on the taskbar like it would normally be. Now, let's go back to the Start menu here. What happens if I start up Office Writer here? It goes and it goes back to the desktop. And it starts up another Office Writer. This is uh, Office Writer 2. And if I go down here, I have both documents here. And to kind of prove it, let's go on the first one. This is Untitled 1, so let's just type 1 here. and we will make it real big so we can see actually let's go to 96 and then we'll go back down here and we'll uh, close that down and go over here and we will put text up to 96 again put two and we're going to reduce that all right so we have one and two and we can select it just like we can in uh, Windows 7 or Windows Vista and if we click on the one it will bring it up for us so that's still the same and we still got the desktop it's just the start menu is gone 
Now, uh, one frustrating thing is is that usually in previous versions of Windows, they kind of give you a little ways to easily kind of make the operating system look more like the old system. But they really wanted you to use Metro in this uh, start page here from Metro. So they totally eliminated it. And in order to get a start menu down there, there are a few things you can do. Uh, that I've kind of looked up to see what it would be like and you either have to get a third party program to do it or you had to go through um, some complex steps to do it so it's not easy it's not just like clicking a uh, checkbox or something to get it back ignore this here at the bottom is from the virtual machine menu it's not part of um, Windows 8. All right. So now what? If we go here. All right. So here, if we click down in the corner, we see. Okay, we have the desktop down there. Let's open up something else on here. Um, one thing this is very similar to is if you have an Xbox. They're similar like menus to this and I think some of this is like for instance you can buy music here like you could with Apple uh, and here's Xbox Live Games let's, what if we click on that see what happens you can click on uh, that's an app preview well that might not be in here alright so we're gonna hit on the Windows thing here and we're gonna click on calendar Oh, here we go. Takes a second to load, I guess. Oh, you got to sign in with your Microsoft account. So I'm going to just hit cancel there. Uh, let's go to the weather. I think that one is... Uh, I don't think we had to sign in for the uh, weather one. Okay, we're going to uh, in our location, Washington, D.C. All right, so now we have... Uh, Interesting little application here. But if we go down to the corner here, there's just the start menu. So if I hold down the Windows key and the B, or press Windows and then B, it will take me back to the desktop. If I hit Windows, it should take me back to start. So Windows B is the desktop, Windows button is the start. Um, all right, so the, well, there's the app right there, and I'll bring it up from there. Now let me go back to Windows B, or hit Windows B and go back to the desktop. I mean, and. Uh, I think that's the task manager. If I bring up the task manager, it says that um, I have the weather running here, which is really uh, part of the uh, Metro. And I got Xbox Live games. Let's double click on that and try to take us back to that. Go to solitaire, see what happens here. All right, I'm going to escape out of there. And I'm going to go back to the Windows Metro.
and then back to the desktop. Now I am just signed in locally. Windows 8 really wants you to make an account to sign into um, <coughs> Windows 8 really wants you to make an account to sign into their services that are kind of integrated with Windows 8. Uh, but I have not really explored that yet and this video was just kind of a quick introduction just to see if we could do some of the stuff we could in Windows 7 and uh, it will take a little bit of getting used to but if you think of this start page not as like a separate interface but as a start menu I think it will be a lot easier for you to uh, run uh, Windows 8 so that's been kind of like a really rough quick first time review look at Windows 8 I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Mungo Dark Manor, and this has been Dark Manners, and whatever you do, enjoy technology.